Hello, students. Today's video is actually going to take you through a few examples over three different lessons. So as you watch this video, pay special attention to what page you're on and follow me through those pages to take down your notes. So we're gonna be hopping around. We are starting right now on page five. So if you could turn to page five in your packet right now, we are gonna do the notes for lesson two, which we're calling equivalent ratios, and we're just gonna do examples one and two. So let's start with example one. It says sixth grade, let me follow along here. Sixth grade is taking a field trip. For every 10 students, there must be one adult. Create a table to show different scenarios for the number of people on the trip. So yesterday we studied ratios, right? So if I was writing a ratio for this sentence right here, for every 10 students, there must be one adult, right? So that ratio would look like this. You could either write 10 colon one, or you could write 10 with the word two, one. That's what we learned yesterday. But today it's telling us to create a table. So what I wanna do when I create my table is the first thing that's mentioned in the problem is students. And the second thing that's mentioned is adults. If I turn that into a table or what I like to call a T-chart, then I could put the 10 for students here and one adult. And then I could give different scenarios. Let's say 20 students go on the trip. Well, then how many adults? Well, 10 times two is 20. One times two is two. So if 20 students went on the trip, then I would have to take two adults. That stays in the relationship of 10 to one because I could divide right back and reduce this ratio to 10 to one. What if I took 30 students on the trip? How many adults would I need? Well, to get from 10 to 30, you're multiplying by three, and then one times three, right, is three. So I could keep growing this table as long as I wanna grow it, but for every 10 kids I take, I basically have to add another adult. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you didn't get to write this down, pause me now and write that down. And then we'll move to our next question about this. Question number two. If there are 132 total people on the field trip, how many of those people are students and how many are adults? Okay, so we know students and we know adults. But now I'm gonna add a third column, total people. So now I'm gonna have a table with three columns. So I know that if I take 10 students and one adult, how many total people would be on the trip? Well, I hope you're thinking 10 plus one is 11. So that's not the answer because it says there are 132 total people on the trip, not 11. Let's grow it up. Let's say we multiply everything by two here. So 10 times two, what if I took 20 students? That would mean two adults. So I multiply by two, multiply by two. Now, how many total people are there? 22, because if I add 20 plus two, right? And then if I grow this up to 30 students and three adults, that would be 33 people on the trip. And I could keep going like this, but geez, that could take a while. The magic I'm looking for, so like if I dot, 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 and dot, 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 I'm looking for 132 total people. So let's go to 132. Let's put that in our total people column. Now, how can we figure out the multiplier? Well, look at your 11 here. 11 to 132. 
11 times what number gives me 132? I mean, I don't know if you know that. You might not know that off the top of your head. So what's a different way I could figure out what number times 11 makes 132? Think about that. Hopefully, you're thinking I could take 132 and divide it by 11. So if I come off to the side and take 132 and divide by 11, 11 cannot squeeze into 1. 11 can squeeze into 13 one time. 1 times 11 is 11. And I subtract there, I get 2. Bring down the 2. How many 11 squeeze into 22? That is 2. And 11 times 2 is 22, so my remainder is 0. So my multiplier is 12. So 11 times 12 makes 132. Now watch what happens. If I do the same multiplier here with the adults, 1 times 12, 1 times 12 is 12. And 10, 10 times 12 is 120. Now check the math. Does 120 plus 12 make 132? It does indeed. So the question said, if there are 132 total people on the trip, how many were students and how many were adults? Well, there were 120 students and 12 adults. So if there are 132 total people on the trip, then there were, or there are, 120 students and 12 adults. So pause me if you need to write that or copy any of this down. And that's our answer to example one. Great work. Let's move on to example two. And again, pause me if you need to. Okay, example two. Mason and Laney ran laps to train for the long distance running team. The ratio of the number of laps Mason ran to the number of laps Laney ran was two to three. If Mason ran four laps, how far did Laney run? So again, with a problem like this, I'm gonna make a table. So who are the two people in the problem? We've got Mason, who's mentioned first, and we've got Laney. So let's make a chart. Everything can come back to the chart. And the ratio is the number of laps Mason ran to the number of laps Laney ran was two to three. Now watch how easy this is if you make that chart. Now they're saying if Mason ran four laps, so let's put a four here, how far did Laney run? That's our question. Okay, well, let's look at the multiplier. How do you get from two to four? You times by two. And then you do it over here. What's three times two? Six. And that's it. So if Mason ran four laps, Laney ran six laps, super easy. And the second question, again, pause me at any time. If Laney ran 930 laps, how far did Mason run? Okay, you always wanna go back to what I call base camp. So when you're doing a new question with the same scenario, make your Mason Laney chart again. Go back to your base camp, two to three, right? Now reset. Laney ran 930 laps. How far did Mason run? Now that's our question. So we need to look for our multiplier. Three times what makes 930? Well, I don't know that off the top of my head, but I can go backwards and divide 930 by three. 3 squeezes into 9 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 
bring down the three. Three fits into three once. Bring down the zero. Three fits into zero, never. So it looks like my multiplier is 310. So three times 310 is 930 laps. Two times 310 would be 620. So how far did Mason run? Mason ran 620 laps. Ta-da! And then the last part here says, write three equivalent ratios. Equivalent means equal, by the way. Write three equal ratios for the ratio two to three. So two to three. So we're looking for two other ratios that are equivalent. And so you can do any multiplier you want. I usually just do like a, I, my, a multiply by two and I multiply by three. So if I multiply two by two, I get four. And three times two, I get six, which I had up here, didn't I? Four to six. Um, and then if I multiply by three times three, that gives me six. And if I multiply three times three, then I get nine. And I could do anything. I mean, you could do anything. You could do two, a hundred. You, two times a two times hundred is 200, and that would go to 300. That's another equivalent ratio. Meaning equivalent, meaning they have the same value, but they're different numbers. You're growing them up. Okay, so that takes care of pages five and six. Okay, moving along. Now we're going to go, we're going to jump ahead in the packet now to page eight. Jump ahead to page eight. And we're looking at an example here. Now we're in lesson three. We were just in lesson two. We're hopping around. Let's read example one. Pam and her brother both open savings accounts. Each begins with a balance of zero dollars. For every two dollars that Pam saves in her account, her brother saves five dollars in his account. Determine a ratio to describe the money in Pam's account to the money in her brother's account. So I would probably say Pam and her brother, that ratio is for every $2 Pam saves, her brother saves $5. So that ratio would be either two to five or two to five. Very good. Now, part two. If Pam has $40 in her account, how much money does her brother have in his account? So let's go back to base camp. Pam, brother. That ratio was two to five. Remember, this is base camp. That baseline ratio that you always come back to. Okay, now what are they telling me? Pam has $40. So what does her brother have? Well, what's your multiplier? Two times what makes 40? Well, I hope you're thinking 20. Then you must mimic that over here. What's five times 20? 100. So if Pam has, four, if Pam has $40, Pam's brother has $100. Very good. And now we're coming to the end of the video. The last page I need you to visit, and this goes to lesson four, is page 10. So this is our last example of the day, or two examples, I should say. We're on page 10, okay? Thanks for sticking with me. Pause if you need a break. You can pause me at any time. This is lesson four, solving problems by finding equivalent ratio. See, all these lessons kind of bleed together, so it makes sense to do them here all at once. So here's example one. Mr. Bowers and Miss Callahan try to drink a good amount of water each day. For every two cups of water Mr. Bowers drinks, Miss Callahan drinks five cups of water. Together, they drank a total of 91 cups of water. 
How many cups of water did each teacher drink? So we're back to this scenario where we have Bowers is mentioned first, then me, Callahan, and then total. So let's make a three column chart. So our ratio is that for every two cups of water Bowers drinks, I drink five cups of water. So when we're at base camp, our total cups consumed is two plus five, which is seven. Now, together we drank 91. So we're gonna come down here. We have 91 total cups together. How many cups did each teacher drink? So do you remember what we did on the last one that was sort of like this? We have to find our multiplier. So seven times what makes 91? If you're not sure, go backwards and long divide. 91 divided by seven. Seven squeezes into nine once. That gives me two, bring down the one. Seven squeezes into 21 three times. So we're gonna go with a multiplier of 13. And that just means we have to multiply each of these by 13. So two times 13, Mr. Bowers is gonna drink 26 cups of water. And five times 13, if you, and even if you have to go off to the side, five times 13 is 65. And if you add 26 and 65, sure enough, you get 91. So we got it. So Bowers drank 26 cups and Callahan drank 65 cups. Ta-da! Pretty cool. As long as you have your table and you have your baseline, you can get anything you want. Okay, and this is the last one of the video. I promise this is it. You've done such a great job. Let's look at example two, page 10. This one's about Mrs. Kellenberger and Miss Miller love to drink coffee. For every two cups of coffee Mrs. Kellenberger drinks, Miss Miller drinks seven cups of coffee. If Miss Miller drinks 10 more cups of coffee than Mrs. Kellenberger, how many cups does each teacher drink? Okay, this one's a little bit different because we're not talking about total. With me and Mr. Bowers, it was we drank a total of 91 cups. So when we did our total column, we added. This one's a little bit different because it says Miss Miller drinks 10 more cups than Miss Kellenberger, okay? So let's set it up like a chart. So Kellenberger is mentioned first, so we'll get her in there. Kellenberger, and then Miller, and then I'm gonna put my third column as more cups, more cups. Okay, let's get that baseline ratio. For every two cups Kellenberger drinks, Miller drinks seven cups. So looking at that base camp ratio, how many more cups does Miller drink than Kellenberger? I hope you're thinking five, five more cups, five more. So the way it's in the baseline, with the baseline ratio, five more cups. But we want to know how many cups each teacher drinks. How many cups does each teacher drink if Miss Miller drinks 10 more cups? So if Miss Miller drinks 10 more cups instead of five more, how much does each teacher drink? Well, let's see. What's our multiplier? Five times two makes 10. Seven times two, 14. Two times two, four. So does that work out? 
if Kellenberger drinks four cups of coffee and Miller drinks 14, is that 10 more? Four plus 10 is 14, yeah. So Kellenberger drinks four cups and Miller drinks 14 cups. Excellent. So I hope what you're realizing in these lessons, because that was literally like three lessons in one, you're realizing that ratios, right? As long as you have a starting ratio, which I call base camp, you can grow that ratio to equivalent ratios to answer different kinds of questions. All right. Thank you so much for watching and happy trails to you.